welcome to this new episode of Photography Behind the Scenes. Today I'm finally exploring the nature just outside of Vienna and I'm actually still on my way to my destination but just as I was driving I saw this view that I thought wow maybe that's worth the first shot and coincidentally I just came to this parking area right after that so I thought why not just pull to the side and get out and see if that shot might be worth the first one. I've got a roll of Portra 400 loaded and let's check it out. So I got two shots because I'm not sure if the first one's going to be burnt. Uh, we'll see, but I think that was a good start. Good first shot. Now let's continue to the actual destination. So here is that first shot and it actually didn't get burnt. So we've got a full frame here and I suppose you now understand why I wanted to get this photo. I really liked the visible distance across the hill with the yellow lines creating an interesting pattern. Something extra I appreciate is the house in the middle which sits there so nicely and kind of becomes the subject of the photo. The only thing I miss here is actually a different weather day. I came out on this day to capture the grey weather but for this particular photograph I think a sunny day would look better. Here's the second photo I got which I think is much weaker than the first. The idea was to create depth by framing the trees in the shed on the left in the foreground and it did work but I find that the first perspective actually already showed a lot of depth whereas this photo tries a different method but in the process sacrifices the simplicity of the other composition. Then, this here is actually still not the location I was heading for, but I spotted another parking area next to this wonderful road and I just had to get out and get another two shots. What a start! Ooh. Here's the first, and it's super simple. If you've been following the channel for a while, you will have seen me get many shots of this type. A straight look down a road. It just works, and I love how much variety you can find in this simple concept. In this case, I love the autumn colours and the paving. The second shot is the same, but looking the other way down the road, and I'm uncertain, but I think I might prefer this one, because this side doesn't have the green guardrail on the side of the road. So, I've arrived at the location. It seems to be quite a popular mountain, but I was thinking in this weather there wouldn't be that many people, but there are still quite a few. Um, but as you know, I'd prefer to shoot at places where there are not that many people, so yeah, let's begin that search for the more quieter spaces and where I might find a bit of forest where I can shoot in peace and quiet. So, from that parking area there was a path that said it would take me around the mountain and that is where I was walking now, on the lookout for the next composition. I was really enjoying this wet autumn vibe of the day and decided to get yet another photo looking down the path to capture the setting. The result is alright, not so special, the two shots of the road were more interesting I find. Then I was approaching this opening, you could say, where the forest got lower and hence let more light enter the area. And this transition was catching me somehow and so I tried to get a shot. Here's the result and I like it. It's not magnificent or anything but decent I find. I like how the composition gives me two points of interest, firstly the forest in the light and secondly the path that leads past the bushes into the distance.
All right, that seems to have worked. Um, I'm really unsure if it's a cool self-portrait because it, it wasn't supposed to be a self-portrait. I really like the, that tree there, but it's on its own was a bit boring. So I thought, how about bringing another subject into the photograph, which would be me in this case, hoping that I would be out of focus. Wait, did I set focus? Yeah. <laughs> Here is the result. So this actually worked out better than I expected. The tree I was initially trying to capture is the one in the middle. I just like its shape. But to spice up the shot a little more, I added myself as another element in the composition and I turned out to be a smaller part of the photograph than I had anticipated, which I think is great. It makes me a less significant, but still a noticeable part of the photograph. The fact that the focus is not set on me, but on the tree behind, emphasizes that I'm not the real subject here, but the tree is. Further down the path, I found this alley kind of area where the trees create a sort of tunnel. I think it's pretty clear what I mean in the footage. I was thinking, how about another good old running shot using this leafy tunnel as part of the composition? Here is the outcome, and I think this turned out quite nicely. The tunnel effect is working in my opinion, as it builds a frame for what is behind, where also the subject is. The scene reminds me of something you'd see in the film Totoro. Do you relate to that? Of course, it would need to be sunny though, but in this case, I think the weather works fine. As I came out of this tunnel, I spotted that tree on the left that seemed to stand out among its neighbours thanks to its strong orange colour. This is the shot, and I think it's okay. Not particularly good, but not bad either. The idea with the colour worked out, but still the result just doesn't quite catch me. Then, further along the path, I found some leaves that I wanted to frame. This is what I got. It's alright, a nice detail of the forest. I always like how the wet leaves reflect the light on these rainy days, also, I enjoy the wonderful blurry background the 50mm created here. Then, next I got another detail shot of the forest, this time a tree with some little branches climbing up its trunk. This is the result, and I like it. I think photographically it's honestly not that interesting. The background was rendered very nicely again though. But I mean the colours, they are a bit, um, green. There's not much variety in the picture, but I like it nevertheless because of the subject. I find the tree trunk with the small branches pretty intriguing. Excuse me. Excuse me. Yeah. What is this? I'm trying to film a photography video, not a festival recap. I don't know, something a bit more relaxed maybe?
No, no, even more relaxed, quieter. No, that's too quiet, come on. Yeah, that's it. Keep it like that. Give me similar things after that. As you might have guessed by now, this video is sponsored by Epidemic Sound. In case you don't know, they are the company that provides the music I use on the channel. By using their music, I avoid any copyright troubles on YouTube. You should know that when it comes to music, I am pretty picky. You know, I like these slow, almost sleepy tracks in my behind the scenes videos. And due to my pickiness, I actually use multiple sources of music and Epidemic Sound is one of them for some key reasons that I think make them stand out. Let's start with the obvious, they've got a bunch of music, and I mean a lot. All high production quality of course, and additionally they have a huge library of sound effects for when you need those. What I particularly like with Epidemic Sound is how specific you can be when searching music. So when I have a clear idea of what I need, I can narrow down my choice really nicely to find a suitable track. When you go to browse and scroll down, you'll find this long list of specific genres that you can pick from, and I really enjoy using the platform this way. So if you make videos on YouTube, TikTok or somewhere else and need music, you can try out Epidemic Sound and see for yourself with the link in the description which will give you a 30 day free trial. Huge thank you to Epidemic Sound for partnering with me and supporting the channel. Now let's get back to the video. Okay, these are some pretty tough conditions to shoot at the moment. Uh, <laughs> it's begun to rain quite heavily, but I'm in the middle of a cloud, I think. So the mist is amazing. And so I've set up a shot now and I'm covering the camera with my hat and hoping that that'll work. <laughs> so I'm just going to run into the distance and hope that this is going to be a cool photo. And I'll set you up here. Okay, so I'm going to do it a second time because I think the shot is going to be really cool and I don't want it to be messed up just because of the weird pose of mine, so I might even do three, I'm not sure yet. Okay, one last shot because I really think this is going to be worth it. Alright, so let's start off with this shot, which was one I got right at the beginning because I was afraid that the cloud was going to move on and I'll miss my opportunity. I think this photograph is so cool. I mean, you know I love mist and how it makes a photograph so atmospheric, and so that, in combination with the forest, is magical. But, as you know, I decided to add another subject, so here are the three versions. Luckily none of them turned out bad, but I'm still happy that I shot multiple to be safe and I got this one, which is my favourite version. It's not really that different, but I think this one simply worked out the best. What I love overall in all of these is how the forest has become this mystical place in the fog where you can't even properly see where you're heading to. And the cherry on top was to add myself as the walking subject to add a human element to the photograph. Alright, so the conditions are pretty tough to handle, but uh... I'm very happy because it looks amazing and uh, I think I want to get a shot of just trees that are fading into the distance in the mist. Let's try that. So I continued my walk on the lookout now for that photo of some trees fading away. But before I could find the right trees, I came to another spot where I thought a walking self-portrait would work again. I've been waiting for this kind of mist for ages. It's so beautiful. <laughs> um, so yeah, I hope that shot just worked. I don't even know where to move on to. So many cool little details. This is the result, and I think it's amazing. The forest again is pictured as the mystical setting of this story, and I as the subject am small enough to really make those trees feel big. 
Also, I love how the path separates itself in colour from the rest of the photo, just adding a bit of variety and sort of a leading line. Anyway, I think this photo worked out wonderfully. Next, I found a spot where I could sneak deeper into the forest and possibly find a photograph of only trees. I found it, and this is the result. Again, wonderful in my opinion, but as you know, I get quite euphoric when I see misty photos, so there's not much that can go wrong there. I think this is a gorgeous example. Nevertheless, I did of course try my best to find a composition that would make sense in a situation without fog as well. So my intention here was to frame that slightly thicker tree right in the front as the subject from where the other trees seem to spread in something that remotely looks like a triangle formation. I hope that makes sense. I found another place to set up the camera and run in front of it. I really hope these are working because I am actually slightly underexposing, which is not good, but my minimum uh, shutter speed on this camera is 1 30th, so I can't go any lower. I'm on f2.8, 1 30th. I'm unable to go any lower, so I have to hope <laughs> that this is gonna work. Um, but I think I should be getting out of the forest if I just walk that way a bit longer, and then maybe it's a bit brighter. So let's try to get there. So here's what I got, and luckily the exposure is looking fine. It did turn out a bit rougher and very dark in the corners, but overall I'm still satisfied. I absolutely love how the photograph, aside from the technical aspect, turned out. And the way I seem to be lost in midst of all these tall trees and mists, it just works effectively to create this atmospheric photographic scene. Alright, next shot. I think I just forgot to press record, so it wasn't filming, but this is the setup. Um, camera again underneath my hat, and it's Quite interesting, you can see really clearly, no fog, fog. So I seem to be right at the edge of this cloud at the moment. And so what I did just now was run into that thick mass of grey and uh, I hope that looks epic. It certainly does, in my opinion. That fog is so thick, it's like a grey wall I'm running against here. So this was an interesting variation I find, with this version having this two-sided nature of the foreground being out of the fog, but the background being in complete fog. I love the result. Alright, so that was one wonderful session I'd say. <laughs> We had such a good start and it only got better after that. So I think that was a great success as long as this film actually turns out good. So of course, at the moment, I don't know yet if this is really going to be a success, but I think what we were getting so far is very promising and I'm very excited to see the results. And uh, yeah, I think for now, I'm going to start heading back to the car now because as you saw, I came to these fields. They don't look that interesting. There's no fog here anymore. So I think I'll head back up the mountain just go back the same way I came here, and if I find something on the way, I'll of course show you. But for now, I think I'll call it an end for today. And so, my past self has actually already taken the last words from me. I hope you enjoyed this session as much as I did. If you have a favourite, please let me know. I can't decide, but it's definitely one of these foggy ones from the later half. Anyway, that's it for this week. Leave a like if you enjoyed this, consider subscribing if you haven't yet, and I'll see you again next week in the next video. Until then, goodbye. Thank you.